So, <clears throat> welcome back to the show, and uh, I have the privilege to have Lorna Byrne with me now. Lorna, are you here? I am. I'm here in Ireland, and it's a rainy day, and it's my pleasure to be talking with you and your listeners. Yeah, and it's great because uh, I'm in Ireland too, and it's true that the weather is not great today, but I can feel the connection with you, Lorna, and I can feel that there is a sunshine in your heart and in my heart, which is great. And I hope that we can transport this, transport this to our listeners here. Okay, I'm yeah. sure we will. So, um, Lorna, before we start the interview, it would be great if you could talk a little bit about yourself and, uh, and who you are and uh, what made you um, write this book about uh, the angel in my hair. That would be lovely. Um, to me, I'm just um, an ordinary person. Um, I have seen angels from the moment I opened my eyes. I didn't know they were angels. Um, I was only an infant, and I would always try to play with them, catch them, um, but I never could. It's just the most natural thing thing to me. Um, I do have learning difficulties as well, and when I was a child, the doctors had told my parents I was retarded, but it was that I am dyslexic, and I know I'm not even saying that word properly. And as a child, very young child, I used to play with um, my little brother. And um, I, you have to remember, I was only a small child, and at times I would see him in my mom's arms as an infant, and yet at times he was playing with me as well and would be about my age and sometimes older. And it was on the day that we actually touched our hands touched and it just went all tingly and sparkly. And that was the day that the angels actually told me they were angels and that my brother was a soul and that he had died before I was born. And I suppose that's when I started to get the first understanding. But even at that very early age, um, the angels had told me I must keep it a secret. And it was just as I grew older as a child and I would hear comments being passed, I was retarded and things like that, um, that I realized why they had told me to keep it a secret. Because if I hadn't kept it a secret, um, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. I wouldn't have even written the books because way back in Ireland then, when a child has learning difficulties, um, most of the time they were put into institutions so if I had said, you know, to my parents, you know, or to my mom, I can see the angel standing beside you, and um, that's what would have would have happened. So I kept the secret right until now. And as as a child, the angels would say to me, you know, I would write about them and God, but I was only a child, so I didn't take them serious. And it was just when I was older when the angel Michael. Um, came up behind me when I was wheeling my daughter um, home in her pram and he said to me, Lona, it's getting near time for you to write about God and the angels. And I literally stopped wheeling the pram, looked at him and just kind of nearly laughed and cried and said, listen, Michael, I can't even read or write. How on earth does God expect me to write one book? And he just said, you know, help would be sent. And it was after the time my when my husband had died that I had said, yes, I would start now. And um, the first person who I had just briefly met um, went out and bought a laptop and a speakeasy. You know, you speak into the computer and it talks back to you and prints out what, what you say. And that's what I use today because I couldn't spell and write like everybody else. And I suppose maybe the other thing to remember is, you know, you, you ask the question, why did I start right now? And the only thing I can say to you is, um, God chose this time, not me, you know, to give back hope to the world and to give back people faith. And to me, it is incredible because I used to say to God and the angels, you know, if the first book, Angels in My Hair, helps one person in the world, you know, I'd be very happy and kind of feel, you know, my job is over and done. Um, but it is just helping people right across the world, you know, all different religions, the whole lot. And I suppose that's one thing to remember. Each and every one of us has a guardian angel. 
um, that is a gift from God and that is the gatekeeper of your soul. And it doesn't matter what religion you are or what beliefs or even if you say you're an atheist. Um, because I see the light of the guardian angel behind every single human being, even this morning when I went down the town, you know, um, just watching people while I was standing outside a shop waiting on it to open. Um, I see angels with everyone, um, whether they're good or bad. And to me, that is one of the most wonderful things. Yeah, I can, I, I, I can really uh, relate to this. And not that I see them, but uh, I read your book, and I must say that your book has, I, I don't really know how to put this in words, but had such a profound impact on myself. And um, just tell you a little story yesterday evening, because I was, to be honest with you, a little bit nervous talking to you today. Oh, don't be. <laughs> I, I know, but, uh, you know, everybody I'm talking to um, has read your book and uh, you have made such an impact on their lives that, uh, wow. And uh, I'm, I, I must say the same, but I can't put words on this, Lorna, so I can't really say what it did in me. But what I know that yesterday evening I was nervous and I went to bed and I asked my angels to say, okay, make it easy tomorrow. Connect with Lorna's angel and make it easy. And this morning I woke up with a smile on my face, with a, this um, feeling of peace, knowing that this will be perfect. So, so thank you for this. Well, thank, thank you. Um, and thank you for listening to your guardian angel and having me on the show and, and helping, you know, to, to spread the word because I know that's what it's all about. It's about getting, you know, the messages that are in the books out out to people to give them back that hope again, you know, um, to give them, you know, the reason to live, you know, to see that there is more to life. And all that I can say to people is there is more to life. You know, you have a soul and, you know, you actually have a guardian angel. I see them physically every day. I know I can't prove it in the sense, in that, in that way, but it's faith. And what what else would I say? And just to remember that very young children, you know, see angels. It's just that as they grow older, we kind of tell them not to be telling stories or or we say to them, you know, you're telling us a lie or, or we give out to them. And the elderly see angels as well, you know, but I would have many elderly people come up to me and they would say, Lorna, I have seen an angel. And I know angels are real, but I don't tell my son or my daughter or any of my family because they'll only say, I'm going to see now. <laughs> you know, and you'd have to smile at that. You know, they would say, I have to tell you the secret. You know, but angels are real and that's what we have to remember. And God is real. And every single human being has a soul. And you don't just die and rot away in the ground. You actually live. And to me, again, that is incredible yeah and Lorna you're talking about children and um, for me it's a subject um, that is very very close to my heart um, so listener of this show will know that I am a single dad and I've just made that uh, um, my daughter she's called Julie and her mom lived lives in our in another country and so I am in charge of Julie uh, all the time and um, she's so free with me that she tells me that she sees and smells things around the house and she can even predict that if something good is going to happen or something not as good is going to happen. Is this something that you also experience with, with other children? Or? Yes, and I, I would say to, to parents just like yourself, you know, listen to your children, but don't criticize them or make fun of them because as they grow, it would be wonderful if they can you know, that they don't close close that off, that gift off, you know, that, that they still, you know, will be able to see and smell and, you know, and know when something is wrong or when something is good. And that is your daughter listening to her guardian angel. She's only a child. That's what you have to remember. And to your daughter, it's natural and normal. And it is for parents not to close it down. I would say to parents not to question too much but just to listen. Don't fill the child's head with, you know, other things that people say. It's very, very important. 
Yeah, and um, when um, when children are playing also with uh, what they call um, the imaginary, sorry, it's a difficult word for me to say, yeah. imaginary friend, it is really they're playing with either an angel or either a guide or... Yes, it is. You know, most most of the time, I know sometimes a, a child will make up actually an imaginary friend because they have, you know, watched maybe something on the TV and sometimes it can be something negative and bad, but that wouldn't be the guardian angel. That would be just something that they're making up in their own mind. But most of the time it is, you know, the guardian angel or other angels around them, which is actually lovely. Yeah, which is, sounds very, very lovely, really. Um, so, I guess that it's angels are something that is quite difficult for people to embrace. And even, okay, in, at some level we know and we want to believe that they are here. At, at some level, it sounds a little bit uh, hairy, fairy to, to believe in them. Um, how, how are angels really impacting our day-to-day -day life? Uh, let's say for, for me talking to you or for me doing my business or for me being a parent how does it, an angel help me in my life and what does he or they, she wants me to do they're actually helping you all of the time your guardian angel never leaves you for one second so you're never never alone that is very important to remember no matter how sad or happy you are or, or even if you're having a what would you call a bad day or a good day or when you're laughing as well they're there constantly all the time with you and they never leave you for one second. So you're never, never alone. Other angels come and go. And so does the soul of a loved one. You know, say someone who has died that, that you loved um, comes and goes as well. It is your guardian angel that never leaves you for one second. Um, and your guardian angel is always prompting you, you know, to help to, to guide you through life you know, on on the everyday things. I just say to people, angels are great teachers. Um, and it would depend on whatever way your angel is communicating with you. And it's not easy. I'd have to smile because I'd watch the angels and I'd see how difficult it is at times. And it is because we as human beings, you know, we have this habit if a thought comes into our mind, you know, you know, to move a glass in on a table or to say hello to somebody, we kind of think, oh, no, that would be silly to do. But they're actually teaching you to, to respond, to do things. So if you get a feeling, you know, you're just say, sitting at a table and it's, you know, to go and move that glass in, even though you see the glass is fine where it is, just move it a little bit. Or if you're out in your car and you're just about to turn the engine on and you, you're giving the thought into your mind, you know, to go back into the house to get your car keys and you see your car keys are right there with you, I would say to you, they're only teaching you, so go back into the house. Sometimes it is for actually nothing at all and sometimes it could be just to delay you. You know, just to teach you to, to respond. I would have loads of people that would say to me, you know, um, they got the feeling to go back into the house and, um, you know, they didn't find anything at all. And I would say, don't look for anything, just go back in. And then they would say to me, but nothing happened down the road. You know, there was no crash or anything. And I would say to them, isn't that wonderful? There was no crash. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like as if sometimes it doesn't dawn on people. You know, by you being delayed is the reason why there was no accident. Let's say the car that was flying down the road had a clear path. And always, you know, a, lot, a mistake I suppose a lot of us make is we always say, what's in it for me? And we have to stop saying that because most of the time it's not just for ourselves, it's for someone else. You know, you're that lifeline when an angel gives you a thought. And I know this happens every day of the week. And um, people get thoughts into their mind to maybe ring someone or send a letter or a card. Um, and it could be someone they haven't talked to for years. Or it could be someone that maybe they had a row with, you know, a long time ago. Um, I would say to you, try and respond because you never know that that person hasn't asked, hasn't said to their guardian angel or said to God, you know, what's the point in living? 
you know, and giving up um, and have asked for a hope for a sign. Um, and they could, have, they could even mention your name and say, ask him to ring me. And you should, because you're just a lifeline. You save that person's life. You give them the reason to live because you made that phone call or you sent that card. There's nothing in it for you. But I think that is wonderful. We shouldn't always be looking for something for ourselves. Yeah, and I can kind of get what what you're saying here. And it's it's true that um, sometimes we go in, on this journey of life. And um, I, I I did the same. So I'm, I'm the first. I'm putting my hands up. Uh, and we, we hurt people, even if we don't want to. Or we say hurtful things. And then we don't know how to fix this. And it's so great that... Uh, if we can be prompted to connect with the person that we hurt or, or have been hurt by at the right time so that everybody's open to, to forgive each other, that makes life uh, taking a, a meaning that is far, far more beautiful and far more easier to live with. Yeah. Yes, and your, your guardian angel is always doing that. And, and at times your guardian angel allows in other angels to, to help as well. And as I said, even the soul of a loved one, because you feel the presence of the soul of a loved one more than you would any angel, because that person lived in a human body at one stage. And, you know, a lot of people would say to me, and of course, even with my own husband who has died, I would know when he's around. Um, and I know I'm very privileged because God has allowed me to see him and touch him physically as well. But each and every one of us would feel the presence of a loved one. Sometimes it can be just a smell or it's just that you know they're there right with you. And a loved one can, again, prompt you because your guardian angel would allow them in to help to get you to respond. And the thing is, if we do respond to a guardian angel and have more faith and belief, um, it does make life easier. And I always say to people, you know, God's angels never ask you to do anything wrong. So in a sense, they don't ask you to have a row with someone or to be mean or spiteful. And that's always the other side. But we have that free choice, that free will. So let's say when you want to be angry or get cross with someone in any way and and you have done so, it is your guardian angel that is giving you that guilty feeling. You know, you, no matter how small that feeling is, it's your guardian angel giving you that to try and tell you that was wrong what you did. But they love you unconditionally, regardless. And to me, that is another wonderful thing. Your guardian angel never gives up on you. No matter how bad you are or how good you are, your guardian angel loves you equally. So there's hope for me. That's what you're saying. Oh, there is. There, I would say to everybody, there is hope for everybody. That is one thing um, I just find so beautiful to see. You know, even when I'm when I'm out somewhere, and I see people having an argument. You know, um, on occasions the light of the guard, uh, both the guardian angels would open up, and I would see such love and compassion the angels would be having for both of them. You know, and that's, they just love us unconditionally. And your guardian angel only, the only way I can explain it, expects you to do your best. Just try. They don't give up on you, so why should you give up on yourself? Yeah, that's a good question. Why should we give up on ourselves? And I yeah. think that maybe that's how society and how education and even religion kind of teach us or taught us to give up on ourselves. And that's very, very sad because I, I believe, like you, I just said so lovely, uh, that we all have a beautiful soul and um, that we should shine to the world and express our who, who we are authentically to the world. But we have been told differently. I know, and I, I wish we weren't told differently because I know if everyone, I do give out to God at times in, in the words I use, and I, I give out to the angels and I would say, why can't everyone else see angels like I do and be allowed to see people's souls on occasions, which I would feel very privileged to, to see. Because then I know if everyone could see what I see, 
every single day. There wouldn't be a hungry child in the world. There would be no war. You know, there wouldn't be all those horrible things going on between different religions and everything like that. And we would be one nation. I know I know that. And to me, that is, is sad that, that God hasn't allowed that yet to happen. But I know in the future he will. But I think, uh, okay, without going too much in this discussion, but I think that um, God is teaching us a lesson. And the lesson that... Um, Yes, we can we can let ourselves get ruled by other rules like countries, like border borders, like uh, religion, and have a war against the other, saying my religion is better than yours, my country is better, yeah. and so on, and just destroy everything. But as long as we don't really feel that there is something else to do on this planet, and uh, live from our authentic self and our authentic love and share it and give it. I think we need to learn this as as human. And I think that's probably the lesson that God wants us to learn because we are souls. So at some stage we go back and and we have learned something from, from this journey. Yes, we we all have to go home at, at some stage, you know, and that is back back to heaven because of our souls. Um I do just wish that people could see what I see, you know, because love is, you know, we should be loving each other, taking care of each other. You know, we shouldn't be hurting each other at all. I I know if you could see your guardian angel and your daughter's guardian angel, and if on occasions you were allowed to see your daughter's soul or vice versa, you know, you you wouldn't hurt each other in any way at all. No, you're right. You would only be loving each other. You're completely right. And um, I experienced uh, seeing my daughter's soul uh, once or twice. Uh, it was at the start of this year. And I know that I didn't look at her directly. I looked at something a little bit outside her. But she felt it. And that was really incredible. And it was beautiful. Okay, yeah. that's brilliant. But that's the only time I, I, saw, I saw a soul. So I'm not really sure if it, if it was true or not. But uh, yeah, it, it was great. Um how how can you receive the message from your angels? Because, to be honest with you, I don't hear a voice. I don't feel sometimes. Sometimes I feel something inside me. But I'm not really sure. Sometimes I smell. I, I have a lot of different smells. And that's especially in the evening when I'm in bed and when I'm asking help from, the, from my angels. I receive different scents. That's the only thing I, I'm receiving. Is it, how do people usually communicate with their angel and how do they see and, and, and connect with them? Everyone does it in different ways. And it is your guardian angel that is, is trying to to use smells because you're responding to, to the sense of different smells. Um, and that's where your guardian angel is allowing you to know that they're there, that they're listening, and that you are getting help. But maybe now try and hear them in whatever way, start start to search. If you don't actually hear a voice or hear the words, you know, again, I would say to you, it could be just a thought that comes into your mind. And I suppose to say to yourself, you know, your guardian angel will never ask you to do anything wrong or anything bad. So that's very important to remember. So if a thought comes into your mind, you know, just say for the weekend, for for you and your daughter to go somewhere, then just just do it. You know, and sometimes a guardian angel will give a person, you know, a feeling in their stomach when something is not quite right. Yeah. You know, and, and somebody would respond to that. They know that's what it is. Um, and sometimes it is actually, you know, a little kind of, what would you say, a breeze on someone, they would feel a little breeze. It is in so many different ways. It's your guardian angel trying to discover, and you trying to discover, what way to communicate with your own guardian angel. But you could move on from the sense of the smell, but always still use it, use that as well. Yeah, because it is very comforting to when I smell this. I, I, I must be honest yeah. here. It is very. I just feel like um, I'm not alone and. Um, I just feel that everything will be will be fine. Everything will be exactly as, as it should be. 
which is always very it's good to know this and allows us to live in peace but it is and I, I know that is very very comforting to you you know when you get get that smell and that is your guardian angel talking to you and I have to say that is brilliant you know because I know there's thousands of people out there who would say you know they don't get anything but they do it's just that they don't recognize it and I know the guardian angel is trying even other things yeah completely yeah and um you said before that you could see also love and uh, what do you see in when when you see love between people or love in the world and people not being receptive to it or Oh, it's actually very hard to to describe. It's it's um, how can I say it? At times, you know, the guardian angel would be holding on to the person as well, you know, and just then to see the love between the two people, and um, it's like an energy. It's like you know, such a peace and such a joy, you know, going from one person to another. You know, it is. It's actually very hard to describe. I'd have to start to search for words that would give just such meaning to it. But it is something physical, and it's something. It's it's like an energy as well, and yet it comes from the heart and the mind, and in a sense, comes from the soul as well. Yeah. Okay. From the soul as well. That, that's something new for me. Um, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Um, and um, so it's it's an it's an energy field around people, and uh, it's just traveling. And some people are responding to this, some people are not responding. To are, this, like and that. are not. And you have to remember, you know, we all have the gift of love inside of us. We all have it there. It's just that some of us are are afraid to express our emotions to allow that love love to go out. Um, and it would be great if if people would just love a bit more. Yeah. You know have that bit more compassion inside of them, you know, and allow that love to be stirred inside inside of you because love is a wonderful, great, wonderful, wonderful gift. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I would call it one of the number one gifts that we all have is love and we all need love. We all hunger and thirst for love. We all want someone to love us and we all want um, to be loved. You know, even children want their parents to love them. They want, you know, and their parents want to love their children, and yet some parents and some children find it hard to love each other. They're afraid. So at times I just say we need to, parents need to teach their children, you know, how to love because we've lost an awful lot of it. And children are watching parents all of the time. You know, so as much love as you can show your daughter, um, not in just loving her, but in loving others, in what she sees you doing, she's learning how to love as well. Completely, yeah. And I notice this, that um, it's more not what I'm telling her that is important, it's how I am that is important, yes, and who I am. Yes. And there is far more messages com- communicated to her with my energy and probably also with my angels to her yeah. angels than with words and um, that's probably the most powerful message that we can let across today but to go back what you say about love and how people are not ready to give love and are scared of being open to giving it it's that's because of the question you asked before what is in what is it in for me and um I think that if people have this question in the back of their mind, they're never going to give love without having something in return. And we know that love is given, it's not expected. And yes, and you, you have to learn to give love and expect nothing in return. Because unless you learn how to do that, you will never receive love. You know, so you, you have to learn to give it. and and. Children, I suppose the world has changed so much now, it has become so materialistic that, you know, a lot of children don't know how to love or don't even know how to love their brothers and sisters. They hold it, they hold it back and that's because they don't see it. And it's not just up to parents to show love, it is, you know, aunts and uncles, you know, it's it's teacher in the school, it's 
even you know the neighbors down down the road children are are watching all of the time for the signs of love to see that it's okay because I would meet so many people you know at book signings and you know meet and greet and all of that all around the world now and I've met so many adults which is so so sad who have never been able to express love at all or have never been even hugged they don't know how to hug you know to give it freely you know that it's okay you know and I would have so many adults say to me I was never hugged before no one told me ever they loved me not even their parents the parents have to try and say the words I love you and mean it yeah yeah, and um, <clears throat> what you're saying here is is, um, is sad, and, and at some level, uh, it's reflected a bit my my childhood, my childhood also, and um, where my parents didn't know how to express their love, and they were workers, and they didn't know at all, and yeah, the hugs yeah. and uh, the I love you, I, I don't remember any of them to be honest with you, um, but I know that uh, now. With my daughter, she's covered with love. She's covered with this. I hug her all the time. I know when she needs it also. I can feel it and I know at this moment she needs me to be here to come and hug her and say I love you. And the power of of this also, sorry, is that sometimes she's angry because of the situation with her mom and um, she gets angry because she's hurt. But if I don't react and I just send her love, just send her, don't say anything, just send her love, she melts and she says, wow, that was just my hurt and I'm sorry. And that, and, yeah, and after she expressed yeah. love. Yeah. And you have to remember, you know, um, in, a, in a young person being angry is love as well. And a lot of parents mistake that. You know, I just say to parents, you know, they say, oh, my son or daughter, they never stop fighting with me and giving out. They're making life so horrible. But you have to remember, who else can a young person say all those things to? Only the ones they love, because they're going out into the new world, and they're nervous and afraid. So even when she gets cross with her mom, she loves her mom, but she's cross with her. It is another expression of love, and it is to understand that. And you do, because you, you hug her and you let her know it's all right, and she feels the love then. Yeah, and it uh, makes me smile because uh, what you just said here, when a child is becoming very angry with you, uh, it's because they are saying thank you to you for allowing me to express my fears. Yeah. And you are the person with whom I'm safe enough, safe enough to be able to do this. All those things with yes. Yeah, it's great. Huh? A lot of, I'm so sad because a lot of parents forget that. You know, and I just say to parents, don't take it personally. Remember, it is love. Who else can your child say these things to? You know, even when a child says to a mother or father, you're, oh, you're a horrible person, or, or, or you, you're the ugliest, or you're the worst parent in the world. Who else can they say all those things to? Only the people they love. And that's their parents, the people that they are dependent upon, their mom and their dad. Yeah. Or or whoever is, you know, who is looking after them. If it's not the mum and dad, it could be grandparents or it could be a foster mother or you know, or adopted um, parents. Because they have become their father and their mother. They're they're the pillars in that young person's life and they have no one else who they could feel safe to express all of that to. So I just say to parents, it is love. The anger of your child calling you all those names is actually love. And in a sense, I'm trying to wrap you around that little finger as well to get their own way. <laughs> you just have to smile at it. You know, um, I have a young daughter now and she's 15. You know, um, myself and um, my other children are, are all um, grown up or all, are all adults. Um, but a young person will express and call parents' names and everything like that, you know, and say you're no good and you're not the best parents at all and you won't let me do this or that, you know. But a 
child loves you and a child will express, you know, all its fears and anxieties as well. You know, and all of that is love, I have to say, for parents to remember when a child is rebelling against them, it is love. But a parent needs to keep the rules as well, keep the guidelines, because the child is depending upon them. Yeah, the boundaries, I agree with you. The rules, I I kind of... I think that uh, every child has their own uh, guidance system or their own angel that yeah. will tell them, okay, you can do this, we can't do this. Yes, as a parent, you're right. We need to create a safe environment. So we have to keep the boundaries in a place where the child is safe. But after, I think we should trust children. We we, we should trust them a bit more. I know some parents don't, you know, in that in that way, but a parent should you know, ask their own guardian angel to ask their child's guardian angel to look after them. And that's one thing that, you know, since I have written the books, you know, done what God and the angels have asked me to do, more and more parents are calling on their guardian angel and their children's guardian angel as well. And the young people now, I hear from young people all around the world, you know, all ages, you know, from the age of eight up, even younger. Um, and they say, you know, now they know they have a guardian angel and they're trying to be good and they're asking the guardian angel to help them. It could be within within school, with their homework, with their friends, even to help them where somebody is bullying them a little bit. And it's giving them great confidence within themselves, knowing that they're not alone, that they have a guardian angel. And this is, you know, young people right across the board, you know, right across the world. Um, I even hear from young people in Colombia, and I believe life is very hard over there, saying now, you know, they are really trying to be good because they know they have a guardian angel. I always thought everybody knew they had a guardian angel. You know, it never dawned on me that people didn't. Oh, no, for me it was very, very new. It was, in fact, after reading your book that I started to be... um, Okay, no, I, I knew it, part of our culture, because I was raised as a Christian, so there is some mention of this in the in the religion. But again, the religion is a little bit misleading sometimes. So, But I never really felt it. It's only when I read your book that I allowed myself to feel it. And now I believe it completely. Well, I'm, I'm delighted to hear, to hear that. But another thing I, I hear from people is, you know, um, all across the world is saying that, you know, they would come up to me even in hotel lobbies or on the bus and they would say, Lorna, you have changed my life, you know, and I would say to them, it's not me that has changed your life. It is that you have read the books and listened to the messages that are within the books, you know, that God and the angels have sent for you to to help you in your life. You know, and just to hear people, you know, just say that, you know, it has changed their life and you know, they're trying to be better, better people, you know, and they're reaching out and helping others. I got one book signing and there was a huge queue. The book signings would go on for hours and hours. And a couple came up to me with two children and, you know, I spoke to them and signed the books and blessed them and their children. And then they stood to one side and I asked the angels why and the angel said, just watch. And about maybe three more people came up and then another group of husband and wife and um, again two or three children and when I blessed them they gave the other couple a wave that were standing to one side and they said to me you know they're giving us a lift home you know this other the first couple were decided to give a helping hand and, and that was lovely to see. They were actually going out of our, out of the way to bring another family home. And they said they would never have done that before. Wow. <coughs> that's that's incredible. Um reaching out to help each other, that's you know, we we all need each other and we have to reach out and help each other. We all have to play our part. Completely. Just like I'm playing my part and you're playing your part. We we all have to you know, to, to listen and respond and, you know, play our part. And when we feel there's something wrong in our home, is to try and correct it and make it right. 
or if there's something in, in our community or in our country, you know, or in the world when we know something is wrong, to stand up and be counted and say, this has to stop. Can we not do something about it? Because that is one thing the angels are all the time asking, but only what's good. They never ask you to do anything that is wrong or bad or to hurt anyone. Completely, completely true here. And it's, um, I think kindness is going to be the the behavior that is going to change the world. So receiving kindness and giving kindness. And I think that society has been so much about power, about uh, making things happen, about doing, about achieving, that we forget that uh, at our core is being soft, being kind and being of service that is really resonating with who we are. Yes, and it's loving each other. And I, I have to say, I always smile because I would meet many people who would be extremely wealthy. You know, you have to remember, you have to share what you have because you can bring no material thing with you back home to heaven when your human body dies. Yeah. Nothing at all. So I just smile, you know, why keep stocking it all up? Why be greedy when you have so much and you don't need all of that. Help help others. I always remember a very wealthy man I met and um, you know, he had just so so much money and he turned around and said he wanted to teach his children, you know, to be better human beings, you know, to share a little bit. And I asked him, well, are you sharing? And he says, oh, yeah, I am. And I, I said, are you making plenty of money? And he says, oh, yes, I'm making plenty of money, sure, more than I need in abundance a billion times over. And I said to him, well, do it by example. I said, why don't you employ someone for the rest of their life and ensure that that father, say a family, you know, would have enough to raise his family, you know, with with material things that they would need not not to make them wealthy or rich but you know what I mean the normal what I call for myself normal in that in that way and he looked at me astonished and he'd done up all the figures and he said that could cost me over a lifetime of that person you know and he named up some some sum if if that person had two or three children and I said to him how much would that take out of the wealth you have already and he said, it would only take a tiny purse, but, you know, I said to him, remember, you cannot bring all that material money that you have, all those material things with you when you die, and your children don't need all that wealth. So share it. He found it hard. He said he would try. And he actually did. He did do it. Because I heard from him a few years later, and he said he did do it. He hired a man to do gardening in some big mansion that he has somewhere in the world. And all that I know is it is a married man and his intention is to keep this man employed with a good, decent wage so he could raise his family, have a home, you know, the normal things. Um, so I'm happy to have heard that because I know that's a good example for his children. It is a good example for his children. It's a good example for yeah. himself, but also... The and himself. And he found it very hard. <laughs> yeah, because I think he, he was looking at uh, what he was losing except of, instead of what exactly. he's going to... Um, gain. Not only gain, but I think the joy he's going to to, uh, to experience. Yeah. 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 And, um, yeah, seeing a full family with children growing up, having an education, just because you had the wealth, that's amazing, you know, I think. So. It is, it is. I am so happy he did it. I, I prayed for a long time asking, you know, that he would listen to his guardian angel and he, he would do it. And seemingly he did. He told me he did. Now I haven't heard from him now for a long, long time. And I wouldn't even know how to contact him or anything like that. But please God, he, he keeps that man employed, that family. Because I think that is a, it's, it's a wonderful way for him to teach his family as well about sharing and you know to teach himself as well yeah and teaching ourselves to yeah to never mm -hmm. forget that we need to be kind um, because the act of kindness is 
It's priceless. It's priceless, yeah. yeah. It can be a smile, the act of kindness. It can be, you know, sitting in a, a restaurant and your guardian angel is saying to you, say hello to, say, the lady or the man or the child beside you. And it is kind of to say hello. And again, to say, well, what's in it for me if I say hello? And not to feel, well, if I say hello, that's silly. You know, we have to kind of let go of those things. Yeah, completely. We have to go back to who we are. And you're right, the smile just made me um, think about a quote I read. A smile takes a fraction of a second to, to express, but it can last a lifetime in the memory of somebody. Of someone, yeah. yes. Yeah. And we can't see, imagine the joy that we, we could create in somebody. Yeah, and again, you know, um, that is one thing the angels always showed me was, you know, and especially now traveling around the world, how few people smile. Yeah. So one of the messages I am to give out is to tell people to smile. And again, I would hear from people all around the world saying they're making that effort. You know, they're smiling when they're on the sub or on the train or on a bus. And they're even reaching out and saying hello to someone. And they're starting now, I believe, because I've heard from a number now saying that they're actually young people are getting up off the seat and offering it to the elderly. Because that was another thing that had stopped as well. We'd stopped caring, so we have to start to care and love again. Yeah, yeah. Because your guardian angel loves you unconditionally. You know what I mean? Completely un- unconditionally and never gives up on you whatsoever. And to your guardian angel, you are number one. And the important thing is, you know, your guardian angel is the gatekeeper of your soul and never, never leaves you for one second. So you're never, never alone. And I know that has been a great comfort to people all around the world as well, because I've heard back from so many saying that, you know, they were in such a dark pit, such a dark hole, you know, they were thinking of committing suicide and they changed their mind, you know, and one story I always tell people, which happens over and over again, where someone has the book Angels in My Hair, I stay with to heaven, and they say they respond to their angel, you know, they listen when they get that feeling or that thought that comes into their mind. And they've actually handed the book. I, I was just so amazed myself to hear people who are doing this. They handed the book to um, drug addicts. I put it down beside them to a person living on the street. And would you believe, I would hear then from that drug addict telling me that um, it could be a letter or, you know, a postcard that they would send saying that they actually read the book and they gave up the drugs. They're trying to straighten out their life and to see the miracle that the person putting the book on the ground beside them or whatever, how that miracle started to happen. Which I am not really completely surprised, Lorna, because um, I have been, when I started to read it, I was not that open to angels, but when I, I start turning the pages and reading the words on the pages, it just seeks into me, it just went into me, and I could, I was kind of opening to the possibility the more I was going into the to the book. And until at the end, now, I, I fully believe this, and I, don't, I can't even uh, see life differently than, than believing it as it is now. For me, it's my reality now. So I'm not really surprised that um, for people who are using any kind of addiction as a way of either blending in society or either uh, easing their pain, that knowing that there is a guardian angel, knowing that there is unconditional love for them, that will change our life, yeah. Well, it is, it is helping to change so many people's lives, and I thank God and the angels every day for that. As I said, you know, I, I said to them, you know, to God and the angels at the very beginning, if it had one person in the world, I would be very happy. And But I never, humanly, I never expected it to happen in such such a way. Like it's unbelievable. To me, it's unbelievable, even though, you know, the angels told me it would be a bestseller and all of that, and it would, you know, be spread around the world. But you have to remember, you know, God and the angels play their part. I play my part. But the world has to play its part. And the thing is, the world is playing its part. It's 
it's spreading the word of it and it's just changing people's lives um, and all the time for the good. Yeah. And to me, that is just so, so incredible. You know, it's like, you know, meeting a father and his, his two or three children and, you know, the wife has died and, and the father turns around and says, you know, someone gave me the book. I was actually going to give up you know, put my children in for fostering and go and drown myself because I couldn't cope with the loss of my wife. And it changed me completely, you know. And, you know, this particular father, he had, his eldest child was only eight. And the eight-year-old, would you believe it, picked up the book and started to read it and helped Dad as well. And her two other little siblings who were younger than her, you know, she would read the book to them, even though they didn't seem to understand at all. It was like as if they understood what was important for them. And I always remember the, the youngest um, saying to me, we know our mom is in heaven and she's with us when we need her. And to me, that was just so, so beautiful. You know, and the father just saying, you know, thank you, you saved my life, but it wasn't me. I have to remember it was God and the angels. Yeah. And the person who had given the father the book, who had left it down, I always say you don't need to hand the book always to somebody. Just leave it there for them. Yeah, and the, the angel would really drive the right people to it. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, when you hear of people on the street getting the book, you know, um, somebody just leaving it down beside them. And they're reading it and they're changing their life, giving them the courage to live life. And that is one of the most precious gifts is to live life, you know, and to enjoy life because that's what God and the angels want. And love is one of the most powerful gifts. We, we have to learn now again how to love more and how to love, to reach out and help each other. Yeah, completely with you. It's uh, it's amazing because when you are talking here, um, especially about when you are talking about how um, your book changed people's life and how it gave hope and how it transformed their life. And um, I remember in your book how difficult the first years of you being aware of your angel, but you could not communicate this, how difficult it was for you. And now that all these difficulties that you have experienced, now you can share this into a way that brings so much to humanity. It's, it's, it's something that must be extraordinary for you, you know? It is, it, again, it is. It's, um, I, I actually don't even know how to explain that. No, I, um, I know. Because I always find to explain something of myself, you know, that deep I find actually hard. But I know one of the most important things was, you know, when the angels had told me, even though I didn't understand as a child, to keep it a secret. And I'm so glad I did keep it a secret because, as I said, I wouldn't be here talking to you and the books wouldn't be out there in the world either, helping people. Um, and just remember that, you know, God chose this time, you know, for the books to be written because... I can't read or write very well, you know, the way you would with a pen. It's only for, you know, that person, that man who listened to his guardian angel and went and bought me the laptop and the speakeasy because at that time I had no money at all. So I would never have had the money to buy that um, because I would have only have had a widow's pension at the time. You know, and my little girl was only four. Yeah, and it's amazing that um, everything came to you so that you could do it. And uh, and the only thing I can say, Lorna, because our time is, is, is out now, but I want to say something uh, before we go to the contact, how people can contact you, is that you don't know how to speak about yourself, but I am going to say yes. something. I am going to say something, Lorna, that God okay. and the angel choose very well in choosing you because you are the best messenger for this message that could exist on this planet. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say. Well, you're the best for listening and having me on your show. And please, God, we will meet one of these days. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Anyway. You know, I'm not too far away from you now. So. 
<laughs> okay, where are you now? <laughs> I, I'm in Dublin. I'm in Dublin. You're in Dublin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Lorna. Well, so that's, if that's not too far. If people would like to get in contact with you, um, are you currently signing um, somewhere in the world, or uh, what? What people do, and you have to remember because thousands and thousands of people every day are, you know, sending letters and things like that, and it takes me months to get through them. And there's a website. Yeah. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just lonaburn.com. And there's a prayer scroll and questions on that as well. And again, it doesn't cost people anything because I don't want anything to cost, you know, um, I don't want anything to block them from doing so. But people have to remember there's just so many people um, in, you know, wanting to contact me that I can't write back to people. Again, because writing is too hard. Okay, that's fine. But I think that people you know, just want to express to you. Um, this. Yeah, or, or I don't get back in touch with them on their email. But I can assure you that I actually, I don't know how it happens, it's a miracle, but um, on the prayer scroll, somehow I managed to go through all of them every single day, almost every day, except when I'm away. And I pray and ask, and again on the prayer scroll, and that I hear from people saying, you know, that God granted their prayer. Wow. And to me again that's that's wonderful and, and people would, you know, what would you say, they'd pour out their soul mm-hmm. in in that way. Um but I can't reply back and that's what people must remember. And it's just Lorna LornaBurn dot com. Okay, I will put this on my blog and uh, we can do this yeah. in this way. So thank you very much, Lorna. It was a pleasure talking to you today. It's uh, really uh, a pleasure with yourself. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.